Now, once upon a time in Wales, there was a witch called Carag Wen, the White Rock. And she had two children. One child was called Bran Wen, the White Raven. And she was fair of face and fair of heart. But she also had a son. Avakti was his name. An evil child. A nasty child. He was the sort of boy who would take a puppy, put it in a barrel, fill the barrel full of water, put the lid on and then listen to it drowning. They kept him in a high room in the castle where the witch lived, just in case. Now this made that witch so, so sad. And so one day she decided to make a great spell to give him the power of sight. Now, you lot, I don't mean the power of sight. No. I mean the power, the ability to be able to see into the future and to know what was, what is <laughs> to come. And she thought that if he had that power, he would see what the consequences of his actions are and that might change him and make him a better person. And so she started to collect all the stuff to make a great spell. Now you guys, I wonder, can you... Imagine what you need to, to put in a great spell. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's true too. Um, yeah. Well, all of those things, definitely. But she went to the mountain and on the mountain she collected all the mosses. And then she went to the river. And when she got to the river, she collected the slime that grows on the rocks. And she collected the round, smooth pebbles from the bottom of a particularly powerful waterfall. And then she went to the beach. And on the beach, she collected some sand and some seaweeds. And she collected crab legs. Then she went to the fields. And in the fields she collected the wild flowers and the gorse. And in the forest she collected the leaves from the rowan tree. A very powerful tree. A bit of bark from Grandfather Oak. And a little bit of that soil that you find only in forests that smell amazing. And she got it all together and she took it back to the castle and she went down deep in the castle right into the basement and in the basement was where her cauldron sat. Now this cauldron is called the cauldron of never-ending life and there's lots of stories about that cauldron but that's for another day. She put all the ingredients into the cauldron and then she built a big old fire under the cauldron. Now there was one thing missing. You see, it takes a long, long time for a great spell to brew. Can you guess how long? Go on, give it a shot. Well, if you guessed a year, you're absolutely right. 
And this witch, she had witchy things to do. Witches conferences to go to. She had like a, a meal organised with her best mate next Friday. Stuff to do. So she couldn't be stirring that spell all year. So she went to the local town where she knew there was a little boy. This little boy was called Gitto. Little Gitto. And he was blind. He couldn't see a thing. He'd never seen a thing from birth. And, because he was blind, he had no say in the fact when she nicked him and took him back down deep into the castle. And she looked at him and she said, Stir this brew or else. Well, you lot, you do not want to find out what a witch is or else is, do you, huh? Oh, no, no. So... There he was, stirring the brew, and he started. And out in the fields around the castle, the people came and they planted the crops, and the crops grew. And then the people came with their scythes, and they started cutting the crops, and they brought it in. And the trees turned from greens to golds and browns, and the leaves started to fall from the trees. And the first frosts came to the land. And the brew was nearly ready. They was free. Fr free? Uh, hang on. <laughs> free drops left in that cauldron. One of those drops was the magic. But two of them was deadly poison. And poor little Gitto, there he was, stirring and stirring and stirring. He hadn't stopped for a whole year and he was really tired. And he was so tired that he dropped the spoon in the cauldron and one blob bounced out and it landed on his thumb. Ah, it's hot, it's hot. What do you think he did, you lot? What do you think he did? <laughs> Slowly, ever so slowly, the magic spread down into his tummy and then up into his arms and all the way to his fingertips and then up and to his eyes and for the very first time he opened his eyes and he could see but not only could he see now he knew what was coming and the first thing he saw was the witch coming up the path to the castle to see how her brew was doing so as quick as he flashed as quick as a flash, he turned himself into a great hare and started running across the field outside the back of the castle. And the witch came in and saw him go and she turned herself into a great big hunting hound and started to give chase. Closer and closer and closer the hound came to the hare and the hound was about to take the hare when the hare turned itself into a great salmon and dived into the river and started swimming up the river. And she turned herself into an otter and gave chase. And that otter came closer and closer and closer and closer to the salmon when the salmon turned itself into a swallow and flew into the sky. She turned herself into a great hunting hawk and flew after that swallow. And the hawk was just about to take the swallow when looking below him he saw a great pile of corn in the corner of a field and he turned himself into one single grain of corn and fell into that heap but she turned herself into a great big hen and started pecking Until eventually she ate little Gitto up. Now, she felt a bit smug about this. She thought she'd won. But inside of her, 
little gitter was growing. And a week later, her stomach started to swell. And nine months later, she gave birth to baby little Gittel. And she looked at that baby and she was really angry, really angry with it. But then the baby opened its eyes and its eyes were incredible. They were deepest blue, blue like skies on winter evenings. Blue like deep pools of water under the moonlight. Eyes to swim in. Eyes to drown in. And suddenly, she wasn't angry anymore. But she needed to get rid of this little ghetto. And so, she came up with a plan. She got a leather sack. And she put the baby in the sack and she sewed it up until it was completely waterproof. And then she took it to the river and she put it in the river and off it floated down the river all the way to Dulan's Sea. And when he got to Dulan's Sea, it started floating across the oceans. And as he floated across those oceans, he had great conversations with all the creatures that he met. The whales and the dolphins. The fish that live really deep and dark in the bottom. The turtles and the jellyfish. And he learned all of their magic and all of their poetry and all of their songs. And eventually, he ended up getting washed up a river, just actually to the south of where I'm telling you this story now, into the River Dovey. And he went up the Dovey, and eventually he got caught in a little waterfall called a weir. And really strangely, incidentally, on that day, there was a fisher prince fishing in the pool below the weir. And this fisher prince, I have to tell you, was the worst fisher person in all of the land. He may have been the son of the fisher king, but he was useless. And his dad had told him that very morning, he said, listen, if you don't catch any fish today, you're no son of mine. Oof, bit harsh, I know, but that's what it was like in them days. And so the fisher prince had come down to the river whoosh, and he'd taken his fishing rod and he'd been fishing for hours and hours and hours. And then, oh! I've caught something! I've caught something! And he's winding it in and he pulls it out of the water and what do you think was at the end of his line? Yes, a sack. A leather sack. With loads of barnacles and seaweed attached and all of those things. And he looked at it and he opened it up and inside the sack there was a baby. Well, he reached in and he got hold of that baby and he looked at that baby and that baby opened its eyes. And you know what those eyes look like, don't you, huh? Eyes to swim in. Eyes to drown in. Oh, yeah. But then that baby started telling poetry. The most amazing poetry that you've ever ever heard. I wish I was a poet. If I was a poet, I could tell you what it sounded like, but I'm not. It sort of was like wind blowing in the tops of trees. It was like the words that your mother told you the first time she held you in her arms. And that baby said, 
I am the great bard Talizam. And I am the greatest magician. I am the greatest poet that has ever been and that will ever be. And I will be your bard. And that is the story of the birth of the great bard Talizan. Now in Wales we call him Talizan. But he's known by different names all over the world. Merlin, maybe? Have you heard of him? Ah, good. Well, you guys, thanks ever so much for listening. I'm loving telling these stories. And I'll tell you a few more as the weeks go by. Ta-ra for now! <laughs>